This video is picking up right where the previous video left off. We're still in part 080, matrix algebra. And next, we're going to talk about solving systems of equations using matrices in MATLAB. All the code that I'm going to show you today works perfectly in Octave, exactly as it will be shown here in MATLAB. Link to this document is in the video description. I'm actually going to start off by going right over to a PowerPoint presentation. Link to that document is also available in the video description. All right, so consider this system of equations right here. We have three equations and we have three unknowns. So we should be able to solve this system right here, and we're going to do it in MATLAB. But first, we need to represent the information in this system of equations in terms of matrices. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the coefficients and put all those values into a matrix, which is named A here. Then there's going to be two vectors, the vector x hat. We're going to think of that vector as holding the variables or holding the solution to our system of equations. What does x, y, and z need to equal in order for these three statements to be true? And then another vector, b hat, is going to contain basically the constant terms. What's on the right side of the equal sign here? And you should convince yourself, and I'm going to try and help convince you right now, that if we multiply, matrix multiply, a times x and set that equal to b, we basically have this system of equations. So let's think about it. So if we do that matrix multiplication, we're going to dot product the first row of A with the column, the only column of X bar, and that's going to result in the upper right value in B. 3 will multiply by X, 2 will multiply by Y, negative 1 will multiply by Z, and we'll sum all those up and it will equal 10. But that's literally just the first equation that we have up here. And if we follow through on our matrix multiplication, dot product the second row of A with X bar and set it equal to 5, the middle term here, and then dot product the third row of A with X bar, set it equal to the third term down here, well, that's literally just our system of equations. So the point that I'm trying to make is, if you're not super comfortable with matrices yet and you're more comfortable with systems of equations, I need you to convince yourself or be convinced by me that this statement right here is literally just a rephrasing, a different notation for the system of equations that we have up here. And if you can be convinced of that, then hopefully you can see that if we multiply the left side, both left sides, by A inverse, well, on the left side, A inverse times A is the identity. So basically, they just cancel. We're left with X. And that will equal A inverse times B. And X is what we're trying to solve for. And the right side of this equation is just some numbers that we need to throw some arithmetic at and be done. Well, then we have a way of solving the system of equations using matrices. So that's what we're going to do. We need to translate our system of equations into matrix A and vector B. And then I'm going to show you three different ways that we can go ahead and solve the system in MATLAB. So let me run this section here, control enter. All right, so here's my matrix A, here is my vector B. It's literally the numbers that I just showed in that PowerPoint. And then I have three copies of the solution because I'm gonna do it three different ways. I'm actually gonna do it four different ways. So the first way to solve it is use the inverse function on A and matrix multiply that times B hat. And that gives us a vector, which I named X hat, of our X, Y, and Z values in that order, X, Y, Z. Now, the second way to do it is basically the exact same thing. It's just instead of using the inverse function, we're going to raise a to the negative one power and then matrix multiply times b hat. Now, the third way is actually the preferred method, and it uses something called left division, matrix left division. It's written out like this, a backslash b hat. Normally, we divide with a forward slash. The forward slash is like just left of your shift key on your keyboard, but this is a backslash. For me, it's above my enter key, but for you, it might be above and slightly to the left of your enter key. So it's a backslash here. I just think of this as like a division bar where we have B hat in the numerator divided by A in the denominator. And you can tell by the backward leaning tilt of the backslash that that's how the organization would be. And I like to think of it that way because if you think of just like regular multiplication, not matrix multiplication, but if we just have some number A and some number B hat, and I multiplied a to the negative 1 times b hat, that would be the exact same thing as b hat divided by a, because this is basically just the reciprocal of a over 1. So that's why I like to think of this as just a division. Now, why is this the preferred method? Well, according to what I read, it is both faster and more accurate than other ways of solving systems of equations. I have yet to witness any difference 
But that's what I hear. You can read more about that at this link or Google it and find your own information online. Now, the fourth way that I'm going to demonstrate is with the RREF function. This is the reduced row echelon form function. Now, you might remember from Algebra 2, probably, uh, if you're in like the American education system. So the reduced row echelon form is where you have, you've changed the coefficients of the variables in your system of equations such that in the first equation, every variable has a coefficient of zero except for one, which has a coefficient of one. And in the next equation, all the variables have a coefficient of zero except for a different variable that has a coefficient of one. Allow me to run this and give you a brief uh, diagram. But basically, if you think of these as the coefficients to x, y, and z in the first equation, and then equals negative 2, well, x is 1, 0 times y, 0 times z. That means x equals negative 2. And in the second equation, 0 times x plus 1 times y plus 0 times z equals 5. So that means that y equals 5. And similarly for z down here. And that's basically what RREF does. Uh, all I'm doing with the extra code right here, this, this line in particular, is that I'm basically just getting the last column and ignoring all the other data to display out the solution, the same as above. So that is a fourth way to do it. Although, uh, this way is uh, the best way to do it. Now, matrices have to be carefully formatted for these techniques to work. Let me jump back into the PowerPoint presentation and then I'll get back into the code here. So consider this system of equations here, which does have a solution. Now, if you look at it and you think the formatting is a little weird, you'd be right. There's nothing particularly wrong with it, but it's just not the standard way that we would write it down. And we really need to translate it into a different form so that we don't make mistakes when converting it to our MATLAB code. Here is the bad way on top right here, and here is the much better way at the bottom. In the first equation, there's no W. Or it would be better of us to think of it as there is zero W. In the third equation, there's no V, or there are zero V. Also, there's these constant terms to the left of the equal sign. We would like to move all those over to the other side. So in the first one, add 8 to both sides. In the second one, subtract 15 from both sides. In the third one, add 1 to both sides. Now, this is a much better format because now the coefficients to the left of the equal sign go straight into our matrix the B vector is constructed from the constant terms on the right side of the equal sign. Now, here is my attempt at just copying in the values as they were written. So the naive attempt at solving this. And right away, I run into trouble. I can't calculate the inverse. I mean, A isn't even square, right? So I can't get the inverse of that. So immediately, this does not work. We cannot proceed. So scrolling on down, here's the better way to do it. We take those coefficients, pop them into A, we take the constant terms, put them into B, and now all of our old techniques, or you know, the techniques that I introduced just a minute ago, now they all work. So inverse of A times B, there's our solution. A left divided by B, there's our solution. Reduced row echelon form, if you like, there's that solution right there. So those are our three ways of solving systems of equations in MATLAB. In a future video, not too far into the future, just maybe one or two or three videos. Uh, I'm actually going to show another way to solve systems of equations that will work on nonlinear equations. This way only works on linear equations. Now there's a few more slides at the end of my PowerPoint and there's just a little bit more code introduced down here. Um, I didn't know where exactly to put this so I just popped it into this document here. Basically any sort of special matrix that you can think of that you might need to use in some sort of calculation, you should ask yourself, hey, does MATLAB have something like that that I can just refer to? It probably does. So Pascal 6 right here will generate a uh, Pascal's triangle matrix. I have it right up the top here. Uh, I didn't make my screen wide enough, but we're going to deal with it. Um, Rosser, that function generates a Rosser matrix. I don't even know what that is. Help gallery. We'll show you the gallery of matrices that MATLAB can generate. They are many, 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 many. I'm just scrolling on down here and I'm not even at the bottom. And you can request a particular one by saying gallery parentheses Cauchy 4. And I get a 4x4 four four Cauchy matrix. I'm not even sure what that one is either, but uh, apparently there it is. In a classroom setting, you know, your teacher needs to know that you know how to write the code yourself. So you got to understand what are the limits of how much code you should borrow that somebody else wrote and how much do you need to write yourself. But out in the research or workplace or wherever you're using your MATLAB, 
One of the first questions that you should ask yourself, that any programmer should ask themselves, is, do I really have to write this code, or can I just go get it from somewhere else? True skill in programming is in the design and the careful consideration, the patience of testing. This is where the human element is important and comes in. Usually it's not in the direct construction. It's not in the typing of the code. That's my opinion. And that is all for this video.